Six Flags just came out with their new for 2023 ride announcements and it was interesting to say the least. After a turbulent first year for CEO Salim Basul, he has changed course from saying there would be no new rides for a few years, now to adding rides for the quickly approaching 2023 season. As you might expect with rides being added on a short notice, these rides clearly are targeting families and younger children, so I don't think this is necessarily the end all be all for the future. Although these rides are family based, I think they give us a slight glimpse into who Salim may be willing to work with in the future. I personally think that he'll be going for quality over quantity in terms of additions, unlike his predecessors, and that gets me excited. Salim's beautification plan will be taking a back seat in the next couple of years in favor of some new rides. Salim didn't really get into any details about what we'll be seeing, so today we are going to speculate what types of roller coasters will be coming to Six Flags parks in the future. I'm under the impression that this will be a relatively clean slate with a couple potential exceptions that I'll get into in a little bit. But before that, make sure to do me a huge favor by liking this video and subscribe to the channel for more Six Flags content coming soon. That said, let's jump right in. So far, we have seen three coaster additions under Salim's leadership, and they have all been family oriented. Two of the coasters are clones of each other, which are Kid Flash Cosmic Coasters coming to Six Flags Fiesta Texas and Ober Georgia. These are dueling Skyline Attraction Spaghetti Bowl coasters that are also single rail coasters. The other coaster is a Vekoma Junior coaster called Rookie Racer coming to Six Flags St. Louis. This coaster has a simple cloned layout, but it's actually about 40 feet tall, so it caters more toward a family audience than strictly just kids. That's it for coaster additions that Salim has overseen, but I also see a possibility that Salim could build off the potential success of additions from his predecessor. The three main coasters that have opened since Salim took over and weren't actually ordered by him were Aquaman Power Wave at Six Flags Over Texas, Dr. Diabolico's Cliffhanger at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, and Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I really don't see anything like Aquaman getting ordered unless it really knocks it out of the park because of all the issues that it's caused, including a three year delay for its opening. I know a lot of it was Six Flags' fault by not ordering a turntable right off the bat, but I just don't see Six Flags wanting to deal with that again. However, the two other coasters may have a different story. If Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger and Wonder Woman Flight of Courage were received well, it is still possible that Salim will purchase a few more Raptors and Dive Coasters, and I'll go into that more later. Now let's get into a few coaster models that I think we could see at Six Flags Parks in the near future. Given what we've seen this year, and Salim's commitment to rounding out the family lineups at parks, I think we'll see a couple more of these larger kids coasters installed. The Spaghetti Bowl coasters provide a nice little gimmick on their own with the dueling aspect, so I could definitely see a couple more of these coming throughout the chain in future years. Six Flags Over Georgia and Fiesta Texas both have kid-friendly coasters, so it seems like Six Flags would be willing to add these to any park, and not just the parks that are lacking kitty coasters. I feel like the addition of Rookie Racer to Six Flags St. Louis will be a one-time thing, mainly because the coaster is nearly 40 feet tall and most parks in the chain have a coaster roughly around that scale or smaller, but St. Louis did not. Part of me wants to believe that Salim wanted to fill the family coaster gap at that park and Skyline wasn't ready to produce a family coaster like their new Trailblazer model for this upcoming season. Vacoma probably had this model ready to go, so Six Flags bought it at IAPA. The cool thing here is I think Six Flags will be open to working with both of these companies on larger scale products in the future. I think the Trailblazer model is definitely something I could see at a Six Flags park in the future. To me, this model is like a modern mine train, which perfectly appeals to the family demographic. I'd also have to imagine that the cost is relatively low considering this is a single rail model as well. Vacoma also has plenty more to offer in the family coaster department. Some coaster models Six Flags may go for in the future are the Family Boomerang or the Family Suspended Coaster. 
If they wanted to get even more aggressive price-wise, they could go for a coaster on the scale of Big Bear Mountain, but I don't think Six Flags is quite there in terms of being able to offer the overall theming package to really make a smaller coaster like that stand out. Speaking of Vekoma, let's talk about some of their new thrill coaster models that I wouldn't be surprised to see Six Flags buy in the near future. I've heard that a lot of these new Vekomas are relatively cheap, so I think it would make sense for Six Flags to buy a package of them. The thrill coaster that I find most likely to come to a Six Flags park is actually a tilt coaster. I think the tilt coaster has the best gimmick of any coaster on the market. Wakoma has said that there already has been four tilt coasters purchased and one of them is going to Six Flags Kodiya. I've also heard that those are relatively cheap to build as well, even though we don't have an exact price. Another model that Salim and company could look into is the Vekoma Super Boomerang. These are very large and compact thrill coasters from Vekoma and we've only seen one built and that is in China. Some of the smaller Vekoma launch coasters like the Space Warp, Hyperspace Warp, or Top Gun may also be of interest as well. The smaller lift hill based models like the Renegade look great along with their new Wildcat model. Also, if Six Flags wants to try their hand at the inverted coaster market, for the parks that don't already have a Batman clone, the suspended thrill coaster is definitely something I could see at a Six Flags park. Beyond Vekoma, I also like the prospects of Six Flags continuing their relationship with RMC, mainly for their Raptor model. Six Flags has installed three Raptors, two of those are Jersey Devil clones. Besides some initial downtime, it seems like Six Flags has figured these coasters out and they have been well received. They aren't crazy intense like some of the smaller Raptors, but I think there's a good chance we could see another large scale Raptor at one of the larger Six Flags parks like Great America, over Texas, or over Georgia. I also think if Dr. Diabolical went over well, Salim would be willing to buy one or two more of those as they provide a nice advertising gimmick. I do feel like it would be one or the other with the tilt coaster, but I could see either of those models becoming favorites of the chain. E&M is a manufacturer I could see Six Flags continuing with in the future because of their high capacity and guest satisfaction rates. The other model that I could see the chain purchasing from B&M is the Wing Coaster. They have already purchased one in the past with X-Flight at Six Flags Great America, and like the Dive Coaster, these provide a nice visual gimmick for parks to advertise around. B&M has also been building some smaller, more family-based Wing Coasters, which may be right up the chain's alley, giving the general shift toward families for the future. The last type of coaster I think Six Flags will look to buy in the near future is a compact launch coaster. Now rather that be from Zimperla with the Double Heart model, Premier with their Skyrocket 2, Intimate with some of their new designs, or even SNS with the Access coaster. I see Six Flags potentially being interested in any one of these models. For one, they are nice and easy to clone as they don't take up much space. They are also pretty cheap but they also are still very eye-catching. All these models are pretty tall and fast, so they will give the chain some ammo to advertise with. I find it likely that Six Flags will have a different set of go-to manufacturers and rides under Salim Vesul. Although I don't think he's going to want to break the bank on every single edition, I do think that Salim is going to invest in some higher quality rides. If you look at some of the rides he has been removing across the chain as of late, you'll see that a lot of low quality additions from the Jim Reed Anderson era are being removed. He's already removed quite a few Super Loops, Harley Quinn Spin Sanity at Six Flags Over Texas, and some of the body slides like Bonsai Pipelines at Six Flags America. I expect this trend to continue over the next few years as his vision really starts to take shape. The coasters I mentioned in this video are my best guesses I have in terms of what Six Flags may look to add coaster-wise in the future. And I'd just like to hear what you guys think in the comments below as this is all just speculation at this point. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Six Flags content coming very soon. With that being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.